Hello, my name is Chris Kube. I'm a gyroplane CFI. Today, I want to talk a little bit about blade flap. I've noticed over the years that um, many students struggle with the, the concept of blade flap, uh, and it's a little bit vague and it's a little bit confusing. To make matters worse, when they go and they look at the Rotocraft Flying Handbook from the FAA, the information's a little bit vague. Then they go on that line and they look and they find a bunch of things where folks are saying rotor management. What exactly does rotor management mean? It's not clear. So today I wanna to describe what blade flap is, what happens if you experience it, and a little bit of why you experience it. As gyro pilots, we need to be aware of what blade flap is. Sadly, gyro planes are wrecked every year due to blade flap. I hope this video helps reduce the numbers. Hello, I'm Chris Koob. I'm a gyroplane CFI and I'm here to talk about blade flap. To truly understand blade flap, one has to go back to the beginning. The gyroplane was invented by Juan de la Sierva. It was approximately 1923 when he had his first successful flight. He had many attempts along the way. One of the problems he had with his initial gyroplane was that it would roll over on takeoff. It turns out the original design was flawed because it used a rigid rotor. The blade moving forward experienced higher relative wind than the blade moving rearward. The forward moving blade is called the advancing blade, while the rearward moving blade is called the retreating blade. The problem was when the gyroplane started moving, the relative wind difference caused a dissymmetry of lift. This was responsible for rolling the gyroplane over. Sierva eventually figured out that the problem was due to the symmetry of lift, and he added flapping hinges for the blades. This allowed the advancing blade to rise and the retreating blade to descend. This uh, compensated for the difference in lift. There's a key concept that should be understood from this history lesson. That is, a rigid rotor will result in a gyroplane rolling over on a takeoff roll. When a gyroplane pilot talks about blade flap, the gyroplane pilot is really saying the flap hinge has exceeded its limits of movement. The effect is the rotor becomes rigid. The Rotorcraft Flying Handbook discusses blade flap. However, most students don't seem to get it. They get the idea that the rotors can hit a stop and they can bend and they can hit the ground, but they seem to miss the high speed takeoff portion of blade flap. Some basic pictures showing the dissymmetry of lift that's experienced in rotorcraft. When a gyroplane is in flight, the blade is highest at the front, lowest at the back. As the blade moves forward, it rises, and as it moves back, it falls. This is for the compensation in the dissymmetry of lift. This diagram shows how the angle of attack changes as the blade rotates. You can see in position A, the angle of attack is less than it is in position C as the blade is descending. For flap hinges, modern gyroplanes use a rigid blade and a teetering head. Finally, we're done with the background. Now let's talk about what happens when that teetering rotor head hits its limits. Basically, it acts like a rigid rotor and you experience blade flap. Sierra taught us what happens when we have a rigid rotor and we try to take off in a gyroplane. The result is the gyroplane rolls over and we have an accident. There are generally two conditions where a gyroplane pilot may experience blade flap. The first is when taxiing, typically after the gyroplane has landed and the pilot is slowing the rotor blades, but the gyroplane is still moving. The second is the pilot having insufficient rotor RPM and taking off. In this video, the rotor is fully back. You can see that there's not a whole lot of clearance for the propeller, the tail, or the ground, maybe two inches. It's also one of the reasons why when taxiing, we hold the rotor forward. This is to avoid blade flap 
and the rotor impacting the airframe. When taxiing, we avoid a damaging blade flap by keeping the stick forward. You can see what happens if the stick is moved back versus forward. One of the things we learned about blade flap is that the relative wind is involved. The control stick also gives us the ability to control the angle of attack with the blades and thus put less demands on the rotor, that is, have less dissymmetry of lift. And, and the teetering system has to compensate less for it. You can see the edge of the blade as the rotor stick is moved forward and backwards on both the advancing and retreating blade. You can see that the angle of attack is reduced on the advancing blade. This is what it looks like from the front when the control stick is moved forwards and backwards. To give an idea of what blade flap might look like while you're taxiing, we took the gyroplane out on a windy day, maybe a 15 mile an hour wind. We put in about 20 RPM for the rotor, and then we took a picture of the control stick. You can see that it gets jerked around pretty good. If you experience blade flap while taxiing, you do three things. You move the stick forward, you slow down, you put the rotor brake on. Keep in mind, it doesn't take a whole lot of rotor RPM to get blade flap. This is plenty. More than a few gyroplane accidents have been caused by blade flap on a takeoff roll. Typically what happens is the pilot starts with insufficient rotor RPM and then accelerates the gyro. As the gyroplane accelerates, it experiences dissymmetry of lift. If the dissymmetry of lift exceeds the capabilities of the rotor head, blade flap is experienced. Let's take a look at blade flap in slow motion. When the rotor head capabilities have been exceeded, the advancing side of the rotor disc has more lift and it pushes against the controls. This is felt as strong bumping. Left uncompensated, the gyro will roll towards the retreating side of the disc with the rotor striking the ground. There are several scenarios where a pilot may experience blade flap in conjunction with a takeoff. One common occurrence is when the pilot is rushed. For example, they may have pulled into position to pre-rotate only to hear an inbound aircraft announce that they are on short final. The pilot may be overly concerned with the aircraft that's landing and may rush. They may take off uh, with, with low RPM on the rotor and they may accelerate quite rapidly. Another scenario pilots may experience is when they are doing touch and goes in a gyro. They've taken off, they've flown through the pattern, they've landed, they've sat there for a second, they've talked to their passenger, and they've allowed the rotor RPM to decay. The rotor RPM may be below uh, the specified takeoff rotor RPM. They may accelerate rapidly and experience blade flap. In another scenario, there are certain gyroplanes where the control stick must be in the forward position during pre-rotation. If the pilot leaves the stick in the forward position during the takeoff roll, the rotor is unloaded and the rotor speed may in fact decay, that is, the, the, the RPMs may decline as the gyroplane accelerates. Somewhere in the takeoff roll, the pilot generally realizes that the stick is in the wrong control position and they bring the stick to the aft. As they bring the stick to the aft, they create a great deal of dissymmetry of lift. The rotor RPM is now low. The speed of the gyroplane is fast on the runway. If the rotor head uh, limitations are exceeded, they experience blade flap and the gyroplane rolls over. Uh, later on in the video, 
uh, there is a discussion of an accident report where just such an event occurred. A short field takeoff in a gyroplane can be a risky maneuver. The gyroplane is often accelerated with the stick slightly forward. If the pilot makes a mistake and pushes the stick too far forward, the rotor RPM can become too slow while the gyroplane speed is quite fast. As the uh, stick is moved to the aft, if it's done too quickly, uh, excessive dissymmetry of lift can build up and you can experience blade flap. Before we talk about what you should do if you experience blade flap, let's review the basic elements for blade flap. You have to have dissymmetry of lift, which is caused typically in a takeoff by forward motion of the gyroplane, and you have to have excessive blade flapping to the point where the, the rotors have hit the stops on the rotor head. What do you do if you experience blade flap on a takeoff roll? You do two things. You move the stick to the forwardmost position, you reduce the throttle to idle, and if you have time, you may try braking. The goal is to reduce the dissymmetry of lift. Moving the stick forward decreases the angle of attack of the advancing blade. This effectively reduces the lift in the advancing blade. Accident reports can be very enlightening. Unfortunately, not all countries do a good job with accident reports, particularly when it comes to gyroplanes. This accident report is from South Africa, and it looks like they've done a pretty good job of things. I'll give you a few minutes to read the report, but before I let you get started, I'll summarize it. The pilot is in a Calidus. It's a, an auto gyro product, and in, and in this gyroplane, the control stick must be in the forward position for pre-rotation. The pilot pre-rotated, he got up to 200 RPM, which I believe is normal RPM for a Calidus. He then left the stick forward and he proceeded with his takeoff roll. Uh, partway through his roll, he moved the stick to the aft and he experienced blade flap. This section of the report talks about two elements. The first has to do with the pre-rotation process and what happens to the rotor uh, as the gyroplane accelerates down the runway. In this case, the pilot held the stick forward and the, the rotor didn't get any airflow from underneath. And it means that the rotor basically kept that same speed or perhaps the speed declined a little bit. The second element has to do with the manipulation of the controls by the pilot. It basically says the uh, pilot pulled the uh, control stick back too quickly uh, when he was uh, partway through his takeoff run. In the next accident report, we have a pilot that had insufficient rotor RPM when they started their takeoff roll. They accelerated rapidly and experienced blade flap. Thanks for your time. And remember, this video does not constitute flight training. Go visit your local CFI and get training from him. If you have questions, he's there to answer them. Again, thank you.